Hi, I'm Andy. This video will talk about what to check if your GE side-by-side -side refrigerator is completely dead. Now the inside lights would still be working. You would not hear a compressor running. There's no fans running. There's no lights on the front panel and it does not respond to touch. If that's your scenario, keep watching. The things you'll need to perform these tests is a multimeter to test voltages and a quarter inch nut driver for disassembly. I'll be walking you through a series of tests that when you do them in a particular order, if your refrigerator fails a certain portion of that test, I'll link to a different video that you should watch for more in-depth information on how to further test. First thing we need to determine is if we have good power coming to the refrigerator. When you open a door, if you have lights on, you have good power coming to your refrigerator from the wall. If there's no lights, you need to suspect either a bad breaker, a failed breaker, a bad socket at the wall, or a bad cord leading from the wall to your refrigerator. So that's where you would start looking. But if your lights are on, let's move on to the next step. Okay, before we continue to our next test, I have to say this part out loud. We know that your refrigerator is getting 120 volts because the lights are on, but are you sure that your refrigerator is turned on? Sometimes kids will turn them off or you turn it all the way off thinking you're turning it all the way coldest. Whatever it is, I've seen it happen. So be sure to check that. To continue, uh, we're gonna remove the access panel for the control board. Now, keep in mind that your refrigerator is still plugged in, so this has live voltage. Be careful not to touch anything with your bare hands. Only use your meter leads. To remove the panel, you'll take two nuts off here at the top and then one down at the bottom. Once that's removed, go ahead and set it aside. And I'm gonna pull the camera in closer so you can see what I'm looking at. The first test that I like to perform, really before researching a whole lot further, is to make sure that my control board is getting appropriate voltage. So you'll set your meter to volts AC. It's a V with a wavy line over it. We're gonna be dealing with this light blue plug with three terminals on top of it, and then the orange wire just to the right of it. Go ahead and stick your red lead where the orange wire is, and then the black lead, touch it to the furthest right pin, has a brown wire coming into it. You should have 120 volts AC. This means that your control board is getting appropriate voltage. Another good practice is just give a visual inspection of the control board. I've made a video about just that, but there are some common failure points that you can visually see that have failed, and you really don't have to go a lot further with these tests. Um, many times these capacitors will have bulged out or have goo coming out of the bottom of them. These resistors often will fail because of a bad fan motor um, and so on. So please be sure to watch that video as well. For the next test, you'll have your meter set to volts DC. It has a V with a dotted line and a solid line over it. With your black lead on the J2 plug, we're going to be three over from the left. Count one, two, three. Should be a white wire. And then the red lead all the way over to the right in the number eight slot, you'll have a red wire. And you should be receiving between 12 and 14 volts. If you are receiving voltage, but your fans are not running, you need to determine why that is. So I'll link to the video that you can uh, research that more in depth. If you are not getting voltage, let's go ahead and move on to the next test. For the next test, we are still on volts DC. This time we're dealing with the J4 plug, which is in the upper left-hand corner of your control board. You'll take your red lead Count two from the left, one, two, and you should have a red wire. And then right next to it, to the right, you should have a black wire, number three spot. With that test, you should have between 12 and 14 volts. If you do not have between 12 and 14 volts, that's a failed control board, the one that we're looking at. 
If you do have between 12 and 14 volts between the two wires that we just tested, go ahead and pull J4 from the control board. If your refrigerator starts at that point, you've determined that you have a shorted front dispenser control board and that would need to be replaced. Not the main control board in the back, but the control board at the front. I'll be sure to link to the video where there's further instructions on this. The final test, I'm not going to cover in this video, but I will link to a video that discusses it in depth. You're going to be taking uh, measurements on the J1 plug on these wires. The refrigerator will be unplugged for that test, and your meter should be set to ohms resistance. What you're looking for is a certain resistance at a certain temperature. Your red lead goes here, the blue wire with the white stripe, pin number five, and then the black would go in either pin number two, pin number three, or pin number four. And then based on those uh, resistances, you could tell whether those sensors are good or bad. If the sensors are bad, they would need to be replaced. If the sensors are good, uh, your control board is bad. Well, there you go. I hope that helps in diagnosing your dead GE refrigerator. As you can tell, a lot of the issues are going to come from the main control board. It's the brain of the machine. However, you still have to test the individual components separately just to make sure that one of them has not failed and damaged your control board. If you do have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments. Also, if you have not already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. I'll see you next time.